Hi, I'm John Robert Sutton. I travel the globe searching for the finest ingredients and the hidden gems that have been overlooked by mass distribution. Food that is shared by generation of families, culture, and tradition. I will connect you to the stories behind well-sourced food and the people and places who make it happen. Welcome to Truth in Food. Well, as you know, some of you do, I have traveled all over the world for 30 years, uh, most continents importing food from around the world, and this is to educate you about the truth in food, and I also like educating myself. I do not know everything, and I hardly know anything. One of the regions of the world I have never been to is India. And today, I have some of the finest restaurateurs and chefs in Los Angeles from India. I have Solomon and Mahesh. These two gentlemen have a restaurant and restaurants here in L.A., and I would like to ask them what their journey was, what part of India they came from. Mahesh? Hi, John. Um, I'm Mahesh, and uh, I'm from a southern part of India called Tamil Nadu. Uh, this Tamil Nadu is a state in India, and uh, I was born in a place called Madurai, and it's a small town. It's a very historical town, and uh, I was born there and raised, and then I, was, I studied my hotel management in India, and then I was really fascinated with the food of the whole world, and then, but I wanted to present Indian food uh, in other places, and then I reached the cruises. I worked in the cruise, and then I came to U.S. Uh, to down south in Mississippi. And then I was working in an Indian restaurant in uh, Mississippi. And then and that's where I really was looking forward to uh, explore further in California. And then I came to Los Angeles. And then that was 13 years ago. And now I'm here um, able to deliver Indian food to most of the clients and community in Los Angeles. Great. Now, you're, you said your town was historical. Why was that? Uh, it all depends. Uh, I mean, it all goes back to the language I speak. It's called Tamil. Mm -hmm. It's one of the ancient languages. And this Tamil was born in my place where I was born. Oh, wow. So that's that's where the history comes from. Uh, it, it really is really ancient. And um, have you heard about Tamil? I No, I, I'm familiar with some of the political mm -hmm. things, but tell me more about the, the people the, and the, the indigenous Tamil. Yes. The Tamil is the language spoken by the Tamils, and it is from the state in Tamil Nadu and Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. That's where the Tamil has been spoken mostly. Okay. And uh, it is still being um, um, in all countries, like it's widespread, I would say. That's because of the ancient Tamil kings who used the naval trade and uh, went all over the world and then explored, and then they passed this Tamil and the culture to other countries as well. Fascinating. Thank you. And uh, Solomon, talk about uh, your journey in being a chef here in Los Angeles. Hi, John. My name is Solomon. Actually, I'm also the same thing as uh, from the southern part of India. Uh, I born in Tamil Nadu. It's uh, like uh, the name of the place in Kanyakumari, the tip of the India. So I just uh, like uh, I, I, I'm also the same thing. I did the, the diploma in the hotel management. Mm -hmm. And after that, I got the chance to work in the cruise line. So I just work in three years in cruise line and uh, I'm, I love to work in Indian cuisine, but that is a continental cuisine. So I just uh, keep on asking my friends all, I want to work in the US. So finally I got the chance to work in United States of America. So finally I got uh, like uh, Indian cuisine in Woodlands, the name of the restaurant in Florida. Mm -hmm. So I got a chance to work there. So it's a vegetarian restaurant. So I love to work there. So many, I worked in many restaurants after that, like almost like seven years in land. So finally I got the chance to work in Abiruchi Grill. So almost here, one and a half year. So I love to work in Indian cuisine. That's great. Yeah, thank you. And one of my questions is, I mean, India, Indian food, India is a huge continent. What yes. does that mean, India foods? How many different regions are there? Um, John, actually, India, it's a very diversified country with diversified languages, regions, and each different uh, language has its own uh, region. Mm -hmm. And these regions have their own cuisines. 
so there are like i would say a minimum of 25 to major would be like 10 cuisines wow. in india and uh, those cuisines are determined by uh, i would say the people the region the geography and the staple food which they get in that particular place um so uh, the major ones would be the the south indian stuff that comes from the kerala cuisine the regional cuisine of tamil nadu and then you have the udupi cuisine and then you have up north you have the uh, mogal cuisine and then you have the northeastern cuisine plus you have the coastal cuisines so these cuisines are all very different with each other their prime ingredient is different the way they cook is different and uh, the way they are eaten is also being different what do you mean the way they're eating is eaten yeah, is down different down south uh, people eat using their bare hands which is probably a better way yes. more natural yes. and healthy yeah but i believe like that thing also came from the religion over the years they would say like the five uh, fingers in the hand they denominate the five elements oh wow i did yeah. not know that <laughs> so, so like the five elements is what they believe in the fingers and they bring in all together and they want the food that's been uh, injected into the body has mm-hmm. to have this five elements just like a gratitude towards the five elements wow. that's what they want to do it so every every handful you are having the spirituality of the five elements yes. representing the five fingers yes infused in the food as gratitude yes as a gratitude and that's where like uh, they show the the gratitude towards mother nature and the food itself wow beautiful story now <laughs> in the north it's yeah the north is fork. yeah the north the cuisines are a little different because india being a vast country and because of its ancient cultures uh, the cuisine happened to vary because of the invasions mm. of different rulers over the years we had the mughals that came in they brought their own cuisine from eastern eastern uh, europe is that the rajasthan area uh, yeah the rajasthan the punjab, punjab. those things were all coming through the afghanistan okay. through the uh, iran iraq the, the and, and that's a drier re- that's a drier region where yeah. southern italy uh, uh, india is it's tropical tropical and the, the the drier region has wheat as its staple okay the southern has rice as its staple ah interesting yeah. got it and then you have the coastals that is more of uh, seafood and uh, that determines that cuisine do you um what type of seafood is different in india than the seafood you would find here it's i would say the seafood is very much into the fresh waters the fresh water seafood uh, is very unique to indian uh, coastal regions as well as the fresh waters ponds the rivers uh, they the, the the locals depend on that particular seafood that is from that particular area and they mm-hmm. have like different new dishes that come out of the the fishes and the and the other di- dishes that come out of the seafood that interesting and so when when i was thinking about indian food and really had no experience into it i always thought of uh just these spicy curries and everything was flooded with all this spice no. and realizing that's not true <laughs> yeah that's not true um the spiciness i believe it's coming because of the the curries which are being projected as being spicy or something like the indians are like spicy eaters or something mm-hmm. no that's not true uh, each and every cuisine has its own uh, unique uh, spice levels for that particular dishes mm-hmm. so it's the dish that determines the spice and not like the spice is determined on all the food no it's not the case like that um, so there's a every, every cuisine has its own lighter foods as well as the spice levels the when you say garam masala that's one of the we'll talk about that later in the ingredients the garam masala the word garam means hot mm. but that doesn't necessarily mean spicy mm. it's just the hotness of those different masalas that go with the food so so it's not the spice level is not unique for everything interesting and is there different foods for different seasons um not really um but there are some certain seasonal food depends on the ingredients i would say uh, but it's just the regular food that goes all through the season in india mm-hmm. that's not seasonal foods i would say it depends on maybe solomon here can uh, let us know about any some of the seasonal uh, dishes we may have uh, depending on the festivals we may 
mm-hmm. uh, enjoy and they celebrate that f- different festivals would be uh, bringing in different food to the table you want to explain about the different right. festivals and the food yeah like uh, we are uh, celebrating like uh, on the christmas diwali and the new year things pongal. so pongal mm-hmm. so pongal means like is a tamil uh, we usually southern part of india we celebrate the pongal and what an, time of year is that is a uh, january uh, okay. january 13 14 15 like a uh, 3 days we are uh, celebrate that uh, festival mm-hmm. so we'll make the, the food like a uh, sweet things is a palm free uh, sweet not the canned sugar so it's yeah, palm uh, sugar yeah, yeah palm sugar so this Which is, is the na- natural is, yeah it's a natural so those thing is a uh, very good for the health and mm-hmm. uh, we make the like a uh, is called pongal is a, a name of the dish so usually mm-hmm. the people are like to eat the very digestion is made from the rice and lentil right and so this brings up a good point you know yeah. we have uh, kind of had a vegetarian explosion here but yeah. vegetarian food in india is historical and explain the 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 beginnings of the vegetarian food in india i think the vegetarianism uh, in india has to do something with the religious uh, beliefs people had all through the years and also that kind of like uh, also helped with the healthy nature of the food itself mm-hmm. um, so the religious when i mean the religious uh, beliefs i would say um, uh, cutting i mean like eating meat a uh, lot of religion in india they don't eat meat mm-hmm. so the other option would be definitely vegetarian so the vegetarianism was uh, uh, part of their food especially when the kids are born they have their own uh, uh, milk was staple so that translated into the option for mother's milk is cow's milk mm. but so the religion told to treat the cow as a mother Mm-hmm. so you don't kill a mother to eat them yes, eat the thing sure. so so that was kind of like uh, the religious belief got it so that's where like and also likewise with the other uh, animals too and the vegetarianism is again uh, is has its uh, healthy nature in the indians uh, which really helped them to follow the vegetarianism yeah i mean i look around and all these new vegetarian restaurants are opening up and they It's like, well, wait a minute, why wouldn't I just go to an Indian restaurant? I mean, they have the tastiest vegetarian historical with all of this yes. love for the vegetarian food. Yes, and the vegetarianism also, is also like it's been determined by the South and the North uh, uh, Indian uh, cuisines. Uh, every cuisine in India has its own vegetarian uh, uh, preferences, but the South has its very unique uh, um uh, south i mean vegetarian uh, dishes which uh, you cannot find anywhere in india and what are what are those dishes yeah uh, it is called uh, udupi cuisine or it's called uh, uh, south indian tamil cuisine we would say that's the dosas the idlis the sambar and then you have the vadas those are like made with uh, rice and lentils which happen to be the staple food in southern india mm-hmm. so these dishes have been panned out because of the stapleness and uh, that's where the uniqueness is there so dosa is a southern indian cuisine yes, yes. explain exactly what is dosa and what yeah. makes a good one yeah solomon is going yeah it's a, like i will say like a rice crepe we'll say like a pancake similar like that is a very thin one uh-huh. so it's like a making like a rice and lentil so we are going like a, we are soak it in the water like a, the overnight mm-hmm. the morning we'll make in the grinding again so we'll like a make it the fine batter Mm. so that one you will make it all the uh, flat grill mm-hmm. so you will make it like a, the temperature was a 350 degree fahrenheit mm. so when you make it it will like a, uh, within one minutes it should be ready okay. it's making it very fast so it's a combination with the dosa uh, will make a lentil soup is a sambar is called mm-hmm. and a coconut chutney is made from that coconut and ginger and uh, Yum. those kind of things so the combination was awesome and uh, another thing and the food was the digestion is very fast mm. it's not take long time but the kids they like and the same thing the rice cake is also almost the same thing but is uh, like a uh, uh, semolina we'll always make with the semolina and uh, uh, lentil is mixed together the same thing we'll make the batter and uh, like is is uh, like a without oil we make the rice cake mm-hmm. the, that is mostly for the kids the baby kids 
So is not is a good for the health those thing. Yes, and do you use coconut oil? Uh yeah, sometimes we'll make mm-hmm. some kind of gas they last. Uh, sometimes we'll use the ghee also. Mm. So oh, those yeah. kind of thing is yeah. And <laughs> is explain it? the ghee, the what is that? Uh it's butter. Uh, yeah. The ghee is pretty much like it's uh, clarified butter. Mm-hmm. Uh, the butter has been like clarified. Uh, uh, it's been heated to certain temperatures, and then that really uh, brings out the removes the fat out of the ghee. I mean the butter, and then just the remaining part is called ghee. Yeah, and I've noticed that ghee is becoming more and more popular because of that health factor. That, yes, yes. That the fat has been removed, removed. and boiled out. Yes. And you're starting to see that more and more, and, and, and you have to remember the health of this product that is served in Indian restaurants because so much of this is so healthy for you. Yes. Yes, that's right. Now, the, the, the north. So talk about the... The, the difference in the north with some of the vegetarian cuisine yeah the north cuisine is more uh, is did a, is made majorly because of the mughal cuisine uh, that mughal cuisine has more of the the palak the palak is spinach they use like palak and paneer paneer is again a dairy product paneer it's like, paneer. Yeah, paneer is like mm-hmm. a cottage cheese indian cottage cheese and that that's where uh, they use more of paneer and lentils uh, lentils are from the legumes and uh, lentil forms a very major uh, uh, part of the indian kitchen um, so there's always some kind of a lentil that either forms a major part of the dish or is some part of the dish mm-hmm. so uh, the lentil is always there and that's where is the most uh, it's called the dal tadka the dal the dal the explain dal, dal. yeah the dal is uh, is from the lentils we can make dal uh, from various lentils from like red lentils the green lentils there's a lentil called uh, tur dal so so what what i think people should realize is when you say lentil really you're meaning a bunch of different types of yes. beans not yes. one bean so we no. would say beans no. and you're yes. saying lentils lentils so within the lentil family there are how many different type of beans and the major ones would be like around 5 to 6 kinds of uh, beans i would say okay. uh, the first one would be the red lentils and then you have tur dal oh those are good yeah the chana dal and then you have the green moong dal and uh, you also have a yellow version of it so that's the major uh, dal that goes with the the main food main food yes. interesting and uh, the way of cooking also like you have the potatoes are very common the vegetables like potatoes cauliflower um, and you have the onions are definitely going to be there for every single food and um, yeah the dishes are all determined by the vegetables which we normally get there and uh, the flavor in which uh, it's been cooked through the mughal cuisine now one of the things in the US is when you have a burrito up here a burrito is not native to Mexico so if you actually go to Mexico you will not find any burritos in the whole country yes. and one of the things is is tikka masala i thought well if tikka masala is the national food of england i'll be able to go to india and get the best tikka masala in india but wait a minute tikka masala is not from india Yeah tikka masala is uh, we have a thing called makhni that is the tikka masala version of the indians uh, i think tikka masala over when it came to the western side uh, it turned to a tikka masala uh-huh. but the original one is called a makhni the makhni is made with uh, uh, butter and it's a tomato based uh, sauce it's made from the puree of the tomatoes that are being blanched and then cooked and uh, that's where uh, the makhni became a tikka masala interesting so When you have a western kitchen and you have an indian kitchen what's the difference i mean you have a gas stove here at, what are some of the different ways to cook food uh the major differences would be uh we the major kitchen would be the tandoor that's a very important part of a uh, indian kitchen that cooks the breads and the meats and what is a tandoor a tandoor is a clay oven that is made uh with the uh, which can handle really high temperatures as far as like 600 degrees celsius that that really is a uh it's like a clay pot in which uh, uh it's been cured with a special type of clay uh, that's been applied inside uh, that can withstand the high temperatures 
and the cooking itself has no oil or no grease to it so it's all like uh, a roasted but it's going to be moist inside so your restaurant abi rochi yes how many tandoors do you have right now we are having two two, two of them and then one is cooking for the bread and the other one is for the meat the meat so if i'm getting if i'm ordering something from a tandoor there is no butter and no oil on there it's all just naturally heat. heat yes well that's very healthy yes yes it's very healthy and uh, it's that the the speciality is like it gets roasted and the moistness of any particular meat is intact along with the spices wow so that's where the speciality is so tandoor so if i order tandoor chicken yes what am i getting yeah what you'll be getting is a uh, a well marinated tandoor that's been uh, marinated well enough for a few hours with the indian spices um that has uh, can you explain the, the indian spices, spices that what goes are, with the it, are the spices part of the marinade or are they put on afterward no we part already so like a beginning we'll make like a two kind of marination so first we'll keep the the leg meat so those kind of thing we'll marinate it with the ginger garlic paste wow. and lemon juice and salt so we'll keep it like a 3 hours so we'll soak it because uh, why we are keeping for that one for the tender the meat become yes. the soft mm-hmm. so after that, the second marination we all uh, like uh, making the uh, spices indian spices like a chili powder mm-hmm. and turmeric coriander cumin and garam masala those mm-hmm. thing and uh, with that one we'll add the yogurt because like for the like yogurt. binding yeah wow so and uh, methi is a kasturi methi like uh, is a, like a herbs Mm-hmm. So those kind of thing also will mix together and again we'll put a little bit salt and uh, lemon mm-hmm. juice and then you put that in the tandoor Yeah tandoor we'll use the, the uh, cook it up inside the tandoor like a uh, 15 to 20 minutes mm-hmm. so it's a fully is done so because it's a lose the water inside mm-hmm. so it will get it will get it back the smoke also so is absorb the, the flavor so smoking flavor also so it is is awesome wow i mean yeah absolutely and uh talk a little bit about about yogurt in the foods and the cooking what what type of yogurt are we talking about it's called a desi yogurt uh, most of the restaurants in uh, india or at home we cure our own uh, yogurts um so like we have a small uh, like a basic uh, thing like a yeast Fermentate. thing fermentation and then uh, my mom used to has have a the the milk been boiled and then uh, allowed to cool down and then there's this little yeast thing been added and then that gives us that's called a desi yogurt the original cow milk yogurt mm-hmm. um, but in united states is very hard to find those yogurt but it's all pasteurized and uh, it's the whole whole milk yogurts which we get here uh, so it also brings in almost the same taste as the indian ones so you you have your own yogurt at the restaurant you yes. make yes Yes we we have, we kind of like we boil the milk mm-hmm. and then uh, we we have a curing that is uh, so like a fermented curing which we add to the thing and then that's where we use the pasteurized milk and then we get our own yogurt So how labor intensive is behind the scenes in the kitchen it sounds like you're really starting so much from scratch Yeah like uh, we have very experienced and very uh, uh, masterful uh, Uh, chefs and then assistants which we use and they're, they're mostly from india and then we also have some locals that are helping us in the kitchen and we are training them too um, the kitchen has been uh, manned by solomon and then he's the helm there and then we have uh, three assistants to him uh, each have their own expertise in uh, particular uh, cuisines and then you have another three more assistants we have like a seven to eight uh, people at any time in the kitchen wow and i hear your restaurant when celebrities from bollywood come out that uh you have a particular uh people really from bombay really want your food delivered anywhere they are is that true yeah we do have our own uh, dedicated celebrities that come in uh, we have a uh, mr ar rahman uh, who is an oscar winner uh, who likes our food we delivered him once and he really likes our food and then he's planning to come to our restaurant also one time wow that's that that really tells you something there now i also hear when americans come in and order spicy food 
there's kind of a code that takes place or there's something where you want to make sure they know what they're getting. What What's that about? The spice code for Americans, I would say, is... Uh, it's more like uh, a code between the kitchen and the service staff. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to say like, uh, hey, that's an American spice level and there's an Indian spice level. And What's uh, the difference? <laughs> so the server, without saying anything, will notice a chili on a dish, a whole chili. That means it's American spice. It's strange. I would say uh, the same thing for an Indian spice, the chili is going to be crushed. So you have the, the chili has been crushed, has its more spice levels to it. Got and it. Uh, while a whole chili uh, will just infuse a little bit, but it's not going to be that spicy. So that's a little code that we have. <laughs> that's great. That's funny. Now, what would you cook at home? When you, when you are at home, what dishes do you like to eat? Yeah, the home cooking is more into uh, very light food. We don't go into too much of... Uh, uh, heavy food in the home, but once in a while on a festival or an occasion, we go for that heavy food. But uh, since mostly I have a kid who's six year old and we cook for everybody, so it's going to be light. We always have uh, uh, the dosas, which I was talking about, has to be some part of the day we eat that. Mm -hmm. And then you have the lentils always being part of the day. And then uh, because of the protein nature, this high in proteins, and then we try to keep it as balanced as possible. Uh, mostly we will be having the South Indian dishes uh, uh, on our menu. And what would be, uh, we would have apple pie in America. Is there a dessert that is standard that everybody would like to eat that you serve? That's one dessert that uh, pans from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, that is the gulab jamun. And what is that? <laughs> gulab jamun are like this milk, milk dumplings and uh, that are soaked in the sugary uh, sweet syrup. And uh, those are like uh, the milk powders and the milk dumplings along with uh, the sugar that's been rolled and fried. And then they are going to be immersed in a sugary syrup. Yeah, and those are delicious. And when you, are they, do they variate? I mean, are there some places where someone say, oh, those are better than this place? And uh, They do have some variations. We have it. Uh, it's called like a kala jamun that has less uh, sugary uh, syrup in it, but rather it's more dry, but it is really succulent in the middle. That's another version. And then you have a lot of jamuns that have been topped with uh, dry fruits, and then you have uh, saffron in some jamuns and uh, pistachios in some jamuns, so they're all different. Cool. That was so delicious. And one, what is, you know, biryani, what is this dish? The biryani is uh, is is been coming from the Mughal style. I would say the Mughals uh, when they invaded India, that's where they brought in the biryanis. Uh, and there's one place in India that's really really famous for biryani, and that's Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. The Hyderabad is in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Um, it's now Telangana, I believe. So uh, that's where the biryanis are really popular at. And this biryani is a rice dish um, that has its own spices and it's like a paella, paella. okay got it it's a like a paella. paella yeah so it the the cooking is really unique to it because of its uh, dumb nature it's called dumb d-u-m uh, that's because uh, of the way of cooking we have it it has to be uh, on a how do you call this dumb style it's it's, it's like a slow cooking yeah it's so slow it cooking time. but at the same time it's been uh, uh, there's no not much direct heat involved in it, mm -hmm. but uh, it also has its. Uh, it's like a pressure cooker kind of cooking, mm -hmm. but on fire. So you have a cowboy from Wyoming that walks <laughs> into your restaurant, Abu Rochi. What would you recommend for the first time to experience Indian cuisine? What would that be? Uh, I would probably give him the tandoori chicken, along with some really nice garlic naan. And uh, we'll also give him the biryani to taste. Cool. So yes. garlic naan. Yeah. Explain why yours is better than all the rest. It's a garlic naan is like, uh, it's made from the all-purpose flour. So it's like, um, it's a very good bread. It's, uh, it's cooking on the inside, the clay oven. Because no oil, nice and nothing is there. So it's a no butter also. If they ask butter, we after cooking, we'll apply a little bit on the top. 
So it's uh, so delicious and it is uh, crispy also. Mm-hmm. If it feels we can make it soft all. Okay, any any way can we can make like uh, you know the variation. So the bread always will suggestion for that the garlic naan and stuff with the potato also we have. So we can stuff inside the the bread inside. So we'll keep the potato too. And is uh, is good like uh, some kids they like a cheese. Cheddar cheese will stuff inside the different kind of breads we have. Interesting. Yeah. So you can have all sorts of different stuffings inside the yes, naan. Yes, yeah, we can make it. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been a fascinating journey about Indian culture and cuisine. And Solomon and Mahesh have been my guests here today. I would like to thank you and honor you for bringing all of your history, your experience and your ideas to make Los Angeles a better place of Indian food. Your restaurant once again. Thank you John. Uh, thanks for introducing us and uh, our restaurant Abiruchi Grill in your platform. It really is uh, a great uh, gesture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today on Truth in Food. I'm John Robert Sutton. For more information about this program, please visit my website at suttonselects.com.